Hello, Alex. Hi, Paul. Good afternoon, sir. I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. All good. Enjoying the sunshine. Yeah, it's been lovely, hasn't it? Great. It's great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, so your IT now, what's, what's that all about for people that haven't heard of you before? Um, so we are a company that supports people with learning disabilities. Uh, my background is I spent 12 years working as a learning disability support worker um, and I noticed there was a bit of a, my, well, my passion is kind of, I really love technology and all things techie and I noticed that it was an area that just wasn't being utilised. Um, the organisations I was working for, they weren't using it and I thought things like social media and Facebook and all the computer technology we have now is a great way to bring people with learning disabilities together to help them communicate yeah uh, and they're kind of obviously one of the most vulnerable and marginalized um, groups you know in society and the great thing about using technology with guys with learning disability is it's a great equalizer so it can kind of really help them get to grips with kind of things that we take for granted every day you know, it can make such a huge difference to them. They're um, often people who maybe don't drive. So kind of using things like smartphones to sort of see when the buses are coming and all that sort of thing, it can be a great, a great opening thing. So I just thought, yeah, I wanted to work using technology. Um, I do general care work as well with guys with learning disability, but my specialism is around things like technology. And consequently, I kind of attract clients who are more interested in that sort of side of things. So I've got, I've got guys who do their own like 3D printing and film editing. And I, I kind of know a little bit about a lot of things. Whereas a lot of the guys I work with, they're absolute experts on like 3D printing and film editing. Um, and so I don't know more than they know. They know far more about the subject than I do. But sometimes the bit that they might struggle with is kind of, they might be really good on the technical aspects of it, but they're not so good at maybe how to make things like, if it's a film, how to make things flow. Or they will just do the, right, edit this, edit that, edit this. But they might not have noticed that there's two different cars coming to the same shot. So I, I kind of just do that sort of thing. I'm like a, a bit of a conduit, really. I, I just help them to sort of identify what it is that they're good at, what, what they enjoy. And then we kind of see how we can use that to, you know, improve their lives, to give them new interests, all that sort of thing. Wow, it sounds uh, like a lot of fun. Oh, it is. It yeah. is. I mean, it, I, I get to, you know, I, I do all sorts of things. I, I never know from one day to the next what I'm going to be doing. Um, I've got one guy who loves, um, so he does 360 videos. Now, 360 videos are the... The, the ones that record literally everything around you yeah. and then when you watch them you can literally move around move your finger around the screen and see what's behind the person what's in front of them all of that sort of thing and he does videos of Disney um, he loves going to things like Disneyland and Disney World and all that so whenever he goes he he does videos of it puts it up on YouTube and he has got thousands of views thousands and thousands of views of these th things that he does and I just love you know being being able to be part of that and to kind of um it's great to sort of dip in and out of these things that say I I, I, I know a bit about them but I don't know anything like the detail that a lot of the guys I support know about them and it's just nice to be able to sort of go in there and just sort of have a little sort of you think wow hey maybe we could do this with that or we could use this um so as an example, like the 360 video um, filming, we got in touch with uh, Wales Cathedral a while ago and my gentleman I support went and did a 360 video tour of Wales Cathedral. Oh, wow. um, okay. So all that sort of thing and using the technology for things like, um, I work a lot with people with autism and often, not always, but for some people with autism, things like um, they can have a bit of a, thing about um, going to new places or going to somewhere that they haven't been before and so using things like 360 videos we can actually show them what it looks like we can use things like um, Google Street View to show them where we're going to go and it kind of technology can just make that difference and mean that they don't have that sort of level of stress you know um, yeah, yeah. 
a, a, another example is um, as a as an old time support worker, you know, I would see, let's say I saw Dave twice a week on a Tuesday and on a th Friday. Well, Dave might get a letter on a Wednesday that he can't understand and he doesn't know whether it's he might not be very good at telling whether it's something from Reader's Digest telling him he's won a prize draw for 20 million or whether it's a final demand from the council for his rent. Yeah. And so he would worry about that. But now with technology, even if I'm not there, he can FaceTime me. He can say, oh, I've had a letter. Yeah, I'm a bit worried. I say, right, flip the camera around. So he flips the camera around. I can read the letter. I say, Dave, don't worry. It's just a circular telling you that you're or you know it's from the bank but it's telling you that the interest rates are changing but it's nothing to you know for you to worry about yeah. and suddenly for him all that worry is gone because it's like no right Alex has said it's fine it's all right we don't have to worry so I love the way technology can kind of help people to kind of um yeah just just to really what I always say it levels the playing field you know because behind a keyboard people can't see whether you're someone that has um, a, a disability or whether you know it, it just it just really helps people to yeah um sort of interact on an equal footing i suppose yeah well, that's great it's really good so like so it takes down a lot of barriers doesn't it to yeah. making stuff happen yeah. um no that's that's really good and is it how long have you been going with your business so i've been um i've been fully self-employed since 2012 um, as I say, prior to that, I spent, yeah, spent 12 years working for social services for Somerset County Council. So I, I had a good kind of rapport already with a lot of the people that I support. Um, and what's happened now is um, within sort of uh, care generally, but certainly within Somerset, um, Somerset County Council now give people who get a care package from them the option of how they want to spend their money. So they will get, let's say they get X amount per year for their care. It used to be in the good old bad old days. Well, that care would be provided by Somerset County Council and they trips off to their day centre and it might be something that they enjoy. They might not enjoy it, you know, but it's kind of one size fits all. Right. The joy with the way things are now is they can they have their pot of care money and they can choose where they spend it so they can still go to a day service if if that's if they enjoy it and that's what they really like doing that is brilliant but they can also find <coughs> excuse me people like myself who are uh, we're classed as care micro providers and um, we're registered with somerset county council so we've done our our all our um checks and our, we've got our insurance and you know all those certificates and things and then people can come along to us and kind of yeah because my area is technology people come to me and say oh um yeah i'd like a bit of help with um things like safety on facebook or okay. um a, a common thing that i get a lot is i get parents who say uh dave's got himself onto facebook and he kind of doesn't quite get the the subtleties of it and he's upset a few people or he said some inappropriate things or he you know could you come and help him a bit sort of to understand that because things like social media it is a minefield and we get it wrong you know i get it wrong and it's that whole you know you see something online and you think oh that's rubbish i'm gonna do, 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 do. <laughs> now if you're somebody who maybe doesn't have um quite the communication skills that are required for that sort of thing there's a lot of areas where you can get yourself into quite a lot of trouble without meaning to yeah. um and it's the thing of you know, we all write emails where in the email we sound like Oscar Wilde. We think that that is brilliant. I, that is so well. And yet when we read it back, it doesn't come across at all because there's no context or there's, you know, and it's getting guys to understand that. Yeah. You know, uh, I encourage people when they use social media to use a lot of emojis because for the people I support, that can be a really great thing because a word is just a word. It just, you know, it's there on the page. If you put a smiley face after it, it's kind of like, ah, right, okay, I get it. You're making a joke, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's all sorts of things like that. And say with the technology, we we have all that capability to do stuff like that. To, um, and and I'm shocking because I find it now leaching over into my into my business world, where I'm writing business emails and I will automatically put a smiley face emoji on it. And I think, oh no, I, I you know, this is to a business person. I think, yeah, but hey, you know. I love it's, that. For, 
we yeah. all need, we all need to do more of that. How much? Yeah. How much? How many people have got worried about no tone of voice? I think we definitely need more emojis. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. And I think I think any anything that kind of makes you know communication easier um, is a great thing. I mean, I get bills from my local, you know, from, from my electricity provider. And I'm looking at them and thinking like, what do I, do I owe money? Do you owe me money? <laughs> yeah. And I think if I'm having trouble understanding this, what yeah. about some of the guys that I support? They're getting these things. And it's like, you know, we just want stuff in plain English. We want, you know, do I owe you this? No, you don't. Right. Brilliant. That's all I need to know. You know, and I think, a l technology can be a great way of helping people to to manage things like that and to understand stuff you know and it's much more instant um yeah. and so we can dash off an email to someone and they can write back to us and say oh yeah no it means this or it means that rather than people sitting at home and worrying about stuff and thinking oh well, i'll ask my support worker when he comes and all that they can just do that you know yeah so, yeah i love it but right. i guess that's the sort of rather than going to a sort of an established bigger care provider working for yourself um, as the micro provider, I guess it's it's that freedom to do what do what yeah. you, you love. Totally, totally. So in 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 the the old days when I was um, employed by larger care companies, you know, you'd have an idea, you think, oh great, there's something on on a Wednesday night that I know um, Rob would really like to go to. So I go and see my manager, and I'd say, oh look, Rob would really like to go to this. I'm like, ah, oh, we haven't got the staff on that night. Now, if we, oh, well, can they do it another, no, they can't do it another night because it's on, a, on, a, on that particular night. Oh, well, if we, could we, you know, there's all these layers of kind of, you know, doing this, doing that. Um, with me, somebody comes to me, um, they say, I want to do this. I look at it, I do a little risk assessment. I think, is it safe? Is it, you know, is the person going to be safe doing that? Is it a good thing to do? Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah. You know, I had a, I've got a gentleman who used to be, he was in the um, army cadets when he was younger and he loves um, doing like shooting, but he's never had the opportunity to do that. And he said, I'd really like to, to, to do a bit of shooting. And I said, well, let's look it up. So we looked it up and there was a, a air rifle range in Devon. They supply, you, you, you buy an hour on the range, they instruct you all the safety kit, everything. We drove down there, we did it, he loved it. You know, I, if I'd ever said to my previous employers, I want to take someone shooting, they'd be like, oh, my, oh you know. but it's like the reality is it's a really safe thing. This is a proper <laughs> puck of, I'm not, you know, we're not just going out in a field somewhere and shooting. This is, yeah. you know, but for this person, this was something they really loved and they really enjoyed it. Um, and it's being able to do stuff like that, you know, being able to say, yeah, yeah, let's just go off and do it. Now, I've got nothing against the big care companies that provide a very valuable service. Of course they do. But kind of sometimes it gets lost in the translation. You know, people's, we, we, all the time we talk about people um, and care being person-centred. That's a real buzzword sort of yeah, phrase. Yeah. Person-centred care. Um, you know, or we talk about accessing the community. Well, what does that mean? What it means is it means we can just go into, a, into town and have a coffee with our friends. That's accessing the community, you know, maybe not at the moment. Um, but generally you know uh and so i i kind of part of my job is translating all that sort of social services gobbledygook you know persons centered supported environment you know um valued service user you know into real real language that people can understand saying yeah what they're saying to you is yeah go off go off meet some friends make some you know get some hobbies do something interesting get a job you know yeah. it's yeah it's as simple as that as simple as that. So how many how many people do you see regularly, you know, over and how often so, do you how often do you meet up? Personally, I at the moment I've got about probably about 12 people that I see over a week. Um and generally they tend to be, you know, regular slots. Uh, a lot of the people I see they like that sort of oh it's a Tuesday, I'm going to see Alex at this time sort of thing. So we will meet up. Um yeah, um but Often I will get asked to do other bits of work. So I've just completed a bit of work with Somerset County Council around um, um, sort of relationships and sexuality with people with learning disability. Because often it historically it's one of those things 
it's like oh no people with learning disabilities don't have any sex drives you know and it's like <laughs> sure the the thing is they are also people you know where we are all people and we all have needs and wants and things and it's like so i've been helping um develop a course to talk uh, to present to carers and um, support staff around how to have those conversations with the people we support about sex and relationships and how do we do all that um, and it's, it's just giving the people we work with the same opportunities that we all have take for granted yeah. you know a lot of the guys I support they don't they don't want to do any you know they don't want to like become a, a rocket scientist although interestingly enough i do have a gentleman who i worked with who actually is a he's a um astro no uh, a space physicist is it a space physicist and he's a gentleman who has asperger's but yeah you know people i support they just want to do the things that we all want to do they want to go out you want to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or both or whatever <laughs> you know um they want to go to the football match when they want they don't want to have to go to bed at nine o'clock because that's when their shift changes you know right. it's all that all that stuff it's it's just helping the people i support to live a normal normal whatever that is life um where they get the most out of it uh and where they they feel they're contributing to society and enjoying themselves yeah oh it sounds so rewarding i want to i want to hang out with you all <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, yeah I, yeah I i always say you know people say oh what you're gonna do when you retire i'm like i firstly i'm self-employed i i'm not retiring i can't yeah. afford to retire and secondly he you know it's one of those things um we know we're in the right job when we think if i had a million pounds what would i do and i think well i i probably still do what i do i would just you know it just gave me a lot more flexibility because i could okay i might have the odd day or two off but um you know it's that sort of now i love what i do and i love um you know i, I don't i am not uh uh i despite my 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 company title i am not an it expert um i know probably slightly more than the average person maybe about it but um what what it means is that i can just help people and point them in the right direction you know um we run a, a pop-up digital hub which okay. is a posh term for having a banner um, <laughs> and we set, up, we set it up in our local in our church in the middle of bridgewater in st mary's church and everyone in the community now knows that we're there from 12 o'clock to two o'clock on a thursday uh, coronavirus permitting obviously people come along they come and have a cup of tea and a bit of cake because being church they do very good rock cakes um, and they just come along and they'll bring their iPad and typically it might be an older lady or an older gentleman come in and they'll say, oh, my son who lives in Australia has given me an iPad, but I don't know what to do with it. You know, and it's so rewarding to be able to just say to people, look, you know, if we do this, we can speak to them via video. Yeah. You know, and, and for a lot of people that kind of opens up their world or, or they've been given this thing and they don't know really what they're going to do with it. And it's like, well, what are your interests? And they'll say, oh, well, I love, I love um, singing. So you say, well, look, have you thought about joining these groups and you show them? And suddenly they're like, they, they suddenly get it because they can see that before it was just a bit of technology and thought, well, I don't want to do with it. But they can see how using it, they can access all the things that they're really interested in. Yeah. And that's the bit I love is being able to help people do that. And it's not rocket science. Um, and I'm not trying to sell them anything. You know, uh, when we set up in the church, we do it for free. People just drop in and out. You know, it's it's kind of our little bit way of giving something back to the community. We love doing that. Um, and it just gives me a, a lot of satisfaction knowing that I'm helping someone to sort of, yeah, it's made a difference to someone and they can now talk to their family or friends or, yeah, yeah. I love it. Oh, it's really, it's really, really good. So, so nice to hear such a, you know, hear what you do. You love what you do. I was going to ask about how, how the pandemic's helped, how it's affected some of the people that you meet, if you meet them at regular times. And I know that some people like that routine, but yeah. if, if you've, if they're more savvy with the technology, like you said, it's a great leveler that they're actually probably more up to yeah. than rest. Most people It's probably Right. The, the irony the irony when this all started i was i was obviously concerned for some of the people i support but one of the really interesting things is what we are all experiencing now the not being able to go out the having very limited options 
a lot of my folk that I work with, it's kind of, hey, welcome to my world. This is this is their life. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of it's been a very sort of humbling experience for me because I've been sitting at home sometimes thinking, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. And I and you suddenly think, yeah, and the people I support, that is their life. And and the irony is for some of the people I support, there's very little difference for them at the moment. They're like, oh, you yeah. know, look, you know, I don't go out much anyway. I don't not many people come and see me. So, you know. And you suddenly think, yeah, and that's that's why it's so important to give the people we support the, you know, the, the chance of experiences that we all have. Um, and I am very lucky in that, yes, I I specialise in an area which now has really come into its own because we are running things like little Zoom meetings with some of the guys. And uh, there's one gentleman I support who sells model cars on eBay. And we do that via a very funny sort of, so he's on his computer, but his dad set up his computer so I can see what they're doing sort of thing. So I'm kind of sat at home remotely saying, oh no, I think you want to click on there. Right now, add that. Now, right now, think about the condition of the model. What, right, what years? You know, all those sorts of things. And my, my chap, he's away, he's doing it all. So, you know, I, I, I think it's, it is something, with, with the people I support, it's something, obviously with the pandemic, it's very worrying from the point of view of, making sure they're fully aware of the dangers and um, you know all all of that because many of them have uh, underlying health conditions as well so they're in the most vulnerable the sort of ultra vulnerable group but it, it, it's yeah I, I just find my work at the moment I'm I'm still out in the bout in the community I've got some PPE now which is great some sick county council have provided us with some We've just today taken a delivery of some hand sanitizer from our friends at um, Swallowfields in Wellington. They've been giving that out. So, oh, yeah. so well, I'm better prepared now. But it's also great. It's still great to be able to help people in such a practical way, you know, picking up meds and all that sort of thing. Um, and it is a difficult time at the moment. But certainly the people that I'm working with seem to be getting, you know, getting on very well. Um, they've kind of got, got their heads around it. And often... One of the great things about the people I work with is it's kind of like um, often they will do things very, you know, some of the some of the guys who have certain behaviours and things, they will do things in a very set way. And you think, well, that's never going to change. And then suddenly, because I say, it all changes and they're fine with that. And it's just and you think, Oh, yeah, you know, and they're like, oh, no, no, we know we can't go out. So now we're going to do this. And it's like and and I find myself thinking, like, oh, I was really worried about how they cope with it. And they're just like, no, you know, it's just, well, it is what it is. Let's just now we've got to do this so we do it and it, it's brilliant i love it it's that sort of refreshing honesty yeah. you know um and the people i work with they are they are so honest and if they don't like they'll say well, why would i do that that's stupid why have you got big earrings why have you got funny hair you know it's just like yeah, great i i love the honesty of it and i love the you know um and and the people i work with they can spot a fake a mile off and so that's why i i really enjoy the sort of they, they just get you straight away, you know, you, yeah, they say, well, I've got big earrings. I say, well, it's because it, you remember me now. Well, I do. Oh, there you go then. You know, and they're happy with that. That's great. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. I love the work and I love the kind of, even with things like the pandemic, there are still amazing opportunities and for us to connect because all, all of our work, it, it's, it's about making those human connections and it's great to be able to do that. And, and, and yeah, I still get out in the community. I help folk, and I love it. I love it. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> well, thank, thank you so. It was such nice, so nice talking to you, and uh, your passion okay. for it. And hearing, you know, I was, I was sort of maybe some other people were thinking about how this would affect people with learning, uh, you know, um, disabilities or whatever. And and say they're very, we're all very adaptable, and they're very savvy with tech, which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really good to hear. And. Um, yeah, thank, thank you so much for the time. I'll, I'll add some details if people want to get in touch and say hello with you. Please uh, do. That would be great. And I've got one last uh, a killer question. Um, yeah. You mentioned when you retire that you would do this anyway. You know, you <laughs> love what you do. But if you couldn't do what you do, what would you do instead? Oh, gosh. I, so, oh, I don't, you know, I, I love my video games. So I love, uh, I, I love playing on stuff like that. Uh, I like my motorbikes. Um, I love I love random stuff. I love like amphibians. 
So I love, I've got a pond at home and I love that. Um, and where I live is in the countryside. So I just love getting out in the countryside and all of that sort of thing. I, I don't know if I, as far as work goes, I've done everything. I, I've done everything from tree surgery to I used to drive tanks for the army, but as a civilian and I've been a mechanic and so I, I, I've got quite a range of experience. I, I don't know if, if I couldn't do this. I don't know. I, I think it would be something else with around helping people. If it wasn't working with guys with learning disabilities, it, it'd be something around, yeah, bringing people together maybe, or yeah. just helping them to make those connections, something like that. So rather vague. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, yeah, thanks again. It's been great talking to you. Uh, safe and well, and uh, we'll catch up with you. And I'll say I'll, I'll add some details if people want to get in touch and say hello. So enjoy the rest of the day. See the sun's coming through the window. So I'll let you pop out and enjoy that before it sunsets today. And uh, right. yeah, see you soon. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. Thank you for the opportunity.